When it comes to strength in Jujutsu Kaisen, there are many things that can be considered the marker for what makes you the strongest. But one of the things that very few people talk about because it comes up so rarely is what is the strongest human. Now, obviously, a human is going to have a hard time keeping up with most sorcerers in Jujutsu Kaisen, but being able to do so makes them far stronger than most people ever realize. So let's go ahead and talk about who actually is the strongest human in Jujutsu Kaisen, and it's probably not who you're thinking of right away. When people often think of the strongest human in Jutsu Kaisen, the first one that comes to mind is Toji, and that makes sense. Toji was strong enough to nearly kill, you know, Suguru Gato and Satoru Gojo, but admittedly not at their peaks, only when they were in school. So, while that does make him very, very strong, and as we did see during the Shibuya incident, he's more than powerful enough to keep up with a lot of strong sorcerers and even cursed spirits, there is kind of something to note with him, and that is simply that, well, he is strong, he never actually seemed to hit the full limitation of what he could do. And we know this because of what happens way later in the series. But that's because the strongest person isn't Toji Fushiguro, it's Maki. Yes, Maki actually ends up becoming the strongest human in Jujutsu Kaisen. And there's a very good reason that her strength is far, su far superior to that of Toji. Now, before we get any farther, there was a lot of contention about, you know, just how strong Maki could get. But I have a curious question for you. If you could give her any curse technique, which one do you think would have suited her best? So the reason that Maki's strength far exceeds that of Toji is that her realization comes far swifter and has seems to have far greater effects. Toji was basically the equivalent of like a superhuman. He had just beyond the realm of natural physical capability, he was somewhat resistant to curses, and you know, he could train a curse, and he was physically gifted for combat. But while all of that made him exceptionally powerful, paired with a pretty ingenious mind, he didn't have the ability to necessarily directly fight a lot of people. As a matter of fact, you know, he wasn't really given a good ranking against curses. He wasn't given any ranking against curses because they didn't think he could exercise them. Now, while we do know during Shibuya Incident he was able to, you know, take care of Dagon, there were circumstances around that. I think it's more interesting to note that we've seen from Maki in, you know, the later manga far more. For one thing, she has all of Toji's abilities, including heavy curse resistance, which hers might actually be superior considering that while there were some over extenuating circumstances, she was tanking blows from Sukuna. And in addition to that, she seems to have a far greater awareness of abilities. And this mainly comes in the fact that she uses the same weapon as Toji, but seems to use it far better. And that is the Soul Splitter Sword. Now, that sword is only useful to people who can perceive, perceive what they call the hidden world or the world beyond regular sight. And that's because she and Toji could see the souls of people and things, which you need to be able to do in order for the sword to be effective. So that automatically grants them far greater vision than even most sorcerers could possibly have. But it goes farther with her. She's able to attune her eyesight and other senses to be able to see things like air movement and even heat, thus allowing her to by somehow bounce off of the air by manipulating those very air currents and, and temperature spots. That's pretty powerful because that's almost a curse technique in and of itself being able to hop through midair. It's also worth noting that her ability to do that makes her exceptional against cursed spirits because while Toji could see cursed spirits, she seems to be able to see a lot more than just that. It's also worth noting that one of their greatest assets was their curse immunity, but it can go way further than that. Not only was she able to stand up to cutting blows from Sukuna, which let's be honest, for anybody without cursed energy should have not probably been possible, even with the circumstances around that, but in addition to the fact that she's not susceptible to domain expansion. And this is true. Now, while it was never confirmed that this would work with Toji or not, I have to assume that it wouldn't, but it might not have been an ability that he tested. But we know for a fact that Maki is A, not capable of being dragged into a domain expansion, but then also B, she's capable of being within one without being targeted by it. Now, I happen to think that's pretty interesting because it essentially makes her immune to the vast majority of opponents. Idle Transfiguration would not work on her. You know, Coffin of the Iron Mountain would not work on her. Even Limitless Technique would not work on her. All of these she would be immune to. The only things she's not immune to, technically, would be open domain expansions. Whether that's because the domain expansion itself was incomplete, probably like Ten Shadows, or 
she would be subjected to the same effects as a building because they actually make the comparison that the immunity to this works like physical objects in the real world you know you don't drag a building into a domain expansion you can only drag people so it's worth noting that if she was say confronted with malevolent shrine her curse immunity would kick in but she would still be subject to the same cutting attacks that all of the buildings around her would be but even with that in mind it's still an exceptional ability you also have to pair all of this off the fact that she is a very good tactician we've seen that repeatedly throughout the series with her overcoming enemies even before she got her power up and combine that with her mastery of weapons because they do say she is the best curse tool user that is an incredibly powerful set of abilities and it makes her the greatest human in Jujutsu Kaisen there is one last weapon that is vital to her and that is the fact that much like Toji she has no cursed energy therefore she's not subject to fate it's currently unknown whether this will play a large role in the series I'm certainly hoping that it does but there's no reason to think that she is able to not change the world the way that he was things that should be or you know can be aligned in certain ways by people she can just snap those in half because she's not bound to the same chain of fate that everyone else is so what do you think do you think she's actually the strongest human because i don't think we have a lot to argue about that but do you think she or toji ranked for the strongest human and while you're here why don't you go ahead and click on my video to see if yuji itadori was actually the weakest sorcerer